In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace to you and peace from God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, <clears throat> done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my mysterious fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ have, Christ, have Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. May your people exult forever, O God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter said to the people, You are Israelites, and it is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of our ancestors, who has glorified his servant Jesus, the same Jesus you handed over and then disowned in the presence of Pilate. After Pilate had decided to release him, it was you who accused the Holy One, the Just One, you who demanded the reprieve of a murderer while you killed the Prince of Life. God, however, raised him from the dead, and to that fact we are the witnesses. Now I know, brothers, that neither you nor your leaders had any idea of what you were doing. This was the way God carried out what he had foretold. When he thought, when he through all his prophets, that the Christ would suffer. Now you must repent and turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped out. The word of the Lord. The response to the psalm. Lift up the light of your face on us, O Lord. Lift up the light of your face on us, O Lord. When I call, answer me, O God of justice. From anguish you released me. Have mercy and hear me. 
Lift up the light of your face on us, O Lord. It is the Lord who grants favour to those whom he loves. The Lord hears me whenever I call him. Lift up the light of your face on us, O Lord. What can bring us happiness, many say? Lift up the light of your face on us, O Lord. Lift up the light of your face on us, O Lord. I will lie down in peace, and sleep comes at once. For you alone, Lord, make me dwell in safety. Lift up the light of your face on us, O Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. John. I'm writing this, my children, to stop you from sinning. But if anyone should sin, we have our advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, who is just. He is the sacrifice that takes our sins away, and not only ours, but the whole world's. We can be sure that we know God only by keeping his commandments. Anyone who says, I know him, and does not keep his commandments is a liar, refusing to admit the truth. But when anyone does obey what he has said, God's love comes to perfection in him. The word of the Lord. This day was made by the Lord, we rejoice and are glad. Alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The disciples told their story of what had happened on the road and how they had recognised Jesus at the breaking of bread. They were still talking about this when Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. In a state of alarm and fright, they thought they were seeing a ghost. But he said, Why are you so agitated? And why are these doubts rising in your hearts? Look at my hands and feet. Yes, it is I indeed. Touch me and see for yourselves. A ghost has no flesh and bones. As you can see, I have. And as he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. Their joy was so great that they could not believe it. And they stood dumbfounded. So he said to them, have you anything here to eat? And they offered him a piece of grilled fish, which he took and ate before their eyes. Then he told them, This is what I meant when I said, while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, in the prophets, and in the Psalms has to be fulfilled. He then opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, So you see how it is written, that the Christ would suffer, and on the third day rise from the dead, and that in his name repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached to all the nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses to this. The Gospel of the Lord. This weekend, our three readings are linked through the issue of sin. We hear phrases like, Now you must repent and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out. And then in the second reading, I am writing this, my children, to you so that you may not commit sin. And lastly, in our Gospel, that in his name, repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached to all nations. 
Sometimes I wonder if our world believes in sin anymore. I wonder sometimes if we believe in sin anymore. One of the only times out with the confession I hear the word sin is in relation to diets. When people speak about a bar of chocolate, a glass of wine or something else having X number of sins. The word sin and its connotations have become so associated with people who are dieting or part of Weight Watchers classes than it has with religion and most importantly eternal life. Jesus came to be our saviour. He came to free us from sin, to offer us something better, eternal life. Many people today don't believe they need a saviour. Many people don't think that they sin. Instead, they turn to pleasure, they turn to money, they turn to their position in society. They don't need Jesus in their life, yet how wrong they are. We should not be surprised by this or that our world is in a mess with war and conflict with division. The world has always been like this. That is why Jesus came to us. Jesus came to save us from this, to offer us more. One of the messages of Easter is the Lord's faithfulness to us, even in our unfaithfulness to him. Through our weakness, through our fragility, through our sinfulness, we leave God behind. We look away from God. Sometimes we feel we don't need him. But God is always faithful to us. He always waits on us, turning back. And there are times in our lives when we think of God and we think we're so distant that we don't know the road back. We think we've committed so many sins or big sins that God can't forgive us, that God doesn't want to forgive us. But how wrong and how stubborn we become. Because God is always waiting on us because he loves us so much. God can and God will forgive us if we turn to him with a contrite heart. This is shown for us in our gospel today. The Lord breaks through the self-doubts of his disciples, those men who walked the earth with him, who witnessed his passion and death. They heard firsthand that he was going to rise, and they doubted. He then rises from the dead and he appears to them time and time again and still they doubt. So much so they're convinced the Lord is a ghost. He then shows them his wounds. He opens their minds to the scriptures to recognise him, to understand him. All these three things the Lord did for his disciples, he does for us today. And he does them when we celebrate the Mass. The wounds are the reminder of the Lord's love for each one of us. That he willingly laid down his life for us. The risen Lord continues to speak to us today through the scripture. He's present to us in his word. We share a meal each time we come to Mass. When we sit at the Lord's table, the table of the Eucharist, where we experience communion, where Jesus invites us into communion with him, where he takes us beyond ourselves to experience a small share in heaven, a foretaste of what awaits us in eternal life. Many people look at Holy Communion and think they're not good enough. On one hand, that's true. None of us are good enough, holy enough, or worthy enough 
to receive the Lord. But the Lord humbles himself that we can receive him in the Eucharist. The Eucharist is not the reward for the virtuous. It's medicine for our souls. To heal us, to strengthen us, to bring us forward in faith. To be the Lord's disciples here and now, in Bigger, in Peebles, in Lanark, wherever we are. To be Jesus' witness in our society. It's at Mass that we can appreciate through the Eucharist that the Lord has chosen to come to us. To come to us in our brokenness, in our sinfulness, in our weakness. And then to transform us to be like him, to be strengthened, to go out in his name, to proclaim a message that's been going on for over 2,000 years, a message that will never die, a message of eternal life. But he can only do this if we open our hearts to him, if we allow him an inch to come into our lives and to truly transform us into the person he's calling us to be. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. <clears throat> Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant Church, and as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and never pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the Lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts your praise. And so we sing together the unending hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth, <clears throat> Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. 
and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognising the sacrificial victim, by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Isidore, with St. Mary Magdalene, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world, be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and Joseph our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, Gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good.
through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. At the Saviour's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but in the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy to do anything under my roof, but I will say the word, and my soul shall be healed. My Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you are pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you very much for coming out to Mass this afternoon. It's wonderful again to see so many people here returned to St Isidore's. As many of you will know, on Friday of this week is the feast day of St George, patron saint of England. Many of us have connections to England in one way or another. So I thought it would be nice if we had an extra Mass this week. So on Friday morning we will have Mass at 10.30 here in St Isidore's, as well as our Thursday morning Mass too. But the Friday Mass will be for St George. So I do encourage you, if you can, to come along and to celebrate the most beautiful feast day with us here in St Isidore's. There are bulletins available as you leave the church today. And again, the front page is dedicated to St George, just a little bit about him. So I hope you have a lovely day today and a lovely week ahead. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thank you.